you guys and girls, I'm James and welcome to my channel. Today we're taking a look at another mini drone. Today we're looking at the Holy Stone HS-190. I've always said that the HS-210 is the best beginner drone in the world because uh, it flies so well and I've bought 10 of these and give them away and people absolutely love them. But this one has a lot of cool features about it. And if it's a mini drone, this is a micro mini drone. It's really tiny. Um, but it's got a lot of cool features that the HS-210 doesn't have. Uh, one, uh, it only has one battery, but it's encased inside of it, so you can't take it out and you can't lose it. But you can charge it up with the USB into the wall, or you can also charge it inside the controller. And this is also its carrying case, so when you fold it up, it fits right here in the middle. And I'll show you that when we're going over the features. Um, it's also very fast. It's a lot faster than the 210. So even outdoors, you can fly this outdoors because it, it's so small, the wind doesn't really seem to catch it. And it has a lot of power. It also has the spin feature. I really like that. And this is the price of the drone on Amazon right now. So why do I review mini drones? Because mini drones are so important. You gotta learn the orientation of a drone. Because people go out, and I go over this on all my mini drones videos, that they go out and they buy a drone, they come home with something like this because they don't learn the orientation of a drone. So the orientation of the drone is the same as a big drone. And what I mean by that is they both Look at this thing, I just got the Skydio 2. Can't wait to fly this, I just got it yesterday. But anyway, the, they both uh, pitch forward and back, uh, they roll left and right, they yaw left and right, and then they go up and down. So when you learn how to fly the mini drone with the controllers on the joysticks and the orientation of what it's doing and you don't have to think about it, when you go out and you fly your big drone and you have the joysticks in your hands, it's a lot safer for you, your, your people around you and your drone and you'll have a lot more fun because you won't have that nervousness or of uh, having the drone in the air for the first time not knowing what it's doing. You'll have confidence to, over the controllers. So mini drones are very important to learn on and they're still a blast. I mean, I've got a hundred drones and I still have a blast flying, flying these little things. And I'll show you later, my dogs love chasing these all over the house. So before we go put it up in the air, let me show you a few features of the drone and the controller. All right guys, let's see what she weighs in at uh, compared to the Holy Stone 210. The 210 weighs in at 25 grams and the HS-190 is 24 grams. But if you put the prop guards on it, then it actually weighs just as, they weigh the exact amount. Even though this is much bigger, this one is more, it's very solid and compact inside. So that means it weighs just as much as a AA battery. So inside the box, you're gonna get the drone, the remote. It's gonna come packaged in this really nice packaging and you're gonna get four prop guards, a handy dandy screwdriver, a prop removal tool, uh, some extra screws and four props. And be sure and use this if you break one of these props. If you go and you try to pull this out, all you're going to do is pull the motor out and you're going to break one of the wires inside of it. So it's real important that you use the prop removal tool to pry, the, to pry it off if you damage one of the props. And if, you'll know when it, you damage one of the props because it will not fly. So even though the red ones are in the front and the black ones are in the back, that's for orientation. These two are actually different. So if you do replace one of these, make sure you get the right angle of attack for the blades. So as I mentioned, the drone does fold up and then it can pop inside the controller and you can hook it up to the charging cable. While for it to charge, the remote has to be turned on. So to get the drone in the air, there's a little on off switch right here. You turn that on, turn on your remote, and then you pull down and out on the two joysticks and then they'll be blinking and then it'll start and then you can hit the takeoff button. And to kill the motors, you pull them both in and they'll stop. And you want to, this sets the gyro, so every time you crash it, you want to re, you want, you do want to re, reset these. So it takes four AA batteries in the back of the remote, and the remote is really pretty self-explanatory. This is your speed switch, and it'll beep each time. So it'll beep once for speed one, twice for speed two, and then speed for speed three. I love this feature that it'll spin, and to get it out of the spin, just push it in any direction. So this is your takeoff button and this is your land button. But if it's ever flying close to a pond or, or you get scared, just pull them in and out and it'll kill the motors. Uh, this is your, your return to home. This doesn't work. It's not a GPS drone, so it's just gonna fly into a wall. So don't ever hit that button and don't ever use headless mode. Headless mode changes the orientation of the drone so no matter which way it's facing and you push the, the controller, it'll go that way. And these trim buttons are real important also and they take a little bit of practice. And what I like about this one is when you're pushing down on the trim button, it beeps. So if the drone seems to be going away from you, 
um, or too fast forward when it, and not hovering, then push down on this button until it hovers. So if it seems to be sliding to the left or to the right, you just push down on these buttons and they'll beep until you get it to hover and stay in one spot. But it seems to do really well once you get it set. It just takes a little bit of practice. And to get it to flip, you push down on this button and then push it whichever direction you want it to flip. I forgot to try that when I was flying it. So it says you get five to seven minutes of flight time. I seem to get more than that. And it says 20 to 30 minutes to charge and it seemed like it charged sooner than that. Um, only having one battery is a drawback because uh, you just gotta wait, but it does have the great feature that you can charge it on the go. But use your USB when you're at home so you don't run your batteries down. So let's go put her up in the air and see how she flies. So it's down and out. Kristen. Ooh, it's windy. Man, it does really good. Look at that. You can tell by the pond how windy it is. So if I, if I let it see, the wind will catch it, but it's doing pretty good. And I bet you coming back with the wind, this thing will fly. <laughs> wow. You know, it's so small, the wind doesn't even really, it doesn't really catch it. Man, I seem like I've been flying a lot longer than five to seven minutes. Landing it in the wind. Those hurt. I wonder if we're still on speed one. The way you can tell is by the beep. So you hit speed. No, I think it was three beeps. There's one beep, two beeps, three beeps. So that's speed three. Watch this thing. This thing's really fast. Oops. <laughs> okay. Crashes really well. It's down and out. I'm not used to that. You're used to usually it's down and man, that's a really really bright light. So I'll, I'll get my dogs out here in a minute and let them chase it. So the return to home is not going to work. So let's just try there. Hit the land button. Does real well. Test that out. It holds altitude really, really well. It seems to drift just a little bit. So I have to mess around with the trim just a little bit more. So we're still in speed two. All right, so we're gonna try the circle mode. And what you do to get it out of circle mode, you just touch it. <laughs> All right, guys, this may seem pointless just watching my dogs run up and down the hallway, but there's actually a really good point to this. Uh, it's important to do practices that you don't have to think about. Uh, it's kind of like driving. When you first started driving, you were nervous, but then after a while, you didn't have to think about it. So keep flying this drone until you don't have to think about it, until your motor skills take over and your skill set uh, takes over the joysticks and you don't have to think about it. Uh, that's when you'll be ready to move on to a bigger drone.
thanks so much for watching my review of the Holy Stone HS190. And uh, I still think the HS210 is still the best beginner drone. And the reason why is because there's no quirkiness to it. There's no latency to it. The fluidness of the controls, it's extremely stable. It just flies perfect. It really does. I can't imagine there being a mini drone that outperforms this. But for fun factor, this one beats it. It really does. I love the spin factor on it. It's a lot faster. You can put it in the controller and take it with you. Um, so if you're trying to decide which one to buy, buy both. You can't go wrong. Uh, they're a lot of fun. So if you got something out of this, please like and subscribe. Subscribers mean everything to me on this channel. And I got a lot of other mini drones coming up, mid-size, full-size. Now I even got some boats and cars I'm gonna be doing soon, but I'm still gonna stick to the mini drone theme for a while because these are the most important things when learning how to fly a drone. Uh, so I'll see you in the next one.